Okay, and good morning. Welcome to episode two of Cruisin', A Modern History of Rock and Roll. And I'm Richard McCallum, your host for today's edition, which features 1956. We open the set today with Lisbon Antigua from Nelson Riddle. Uh, Nelson Riddle and his orchestra, uh, the featured uh, piano player in the song was Stan Reitzman, is best remembered for his distinctive studio arranging conducting successes with Frank Sinatra, Nat Cole, Nat King Cole as we know him, Linda Ronstadt, and many, many others. Riddle did have this one major hit single on his own, the number one bestseller for four weeks in 1956, Lisbon Antigua, a great track. Then we followed with The Wayward Wind by Gogi Grant, orchestra and, orchestra and chorus conducted by Buddy Bregman. This was one of the year's biggest hits. It spent six weeks perched atop the bestseller listings. And then, finally, the third track in the set was from Pat Boone, I Almost Lost My Mind. In the years immediately prior to the British invasion, only one performer rivaled the chart dominance of Elvis Presley, and that was Pat Boone. With his trademark white buck shoes, perfectly combed hair, and gleaming smile, Boone was the very essence of wholesome American values, and at a time when the rise of rock and roll was viewed as a sign of the apocalypse, he made music appear safe and non-threatening, earning some 38 top 40 hits in the process. Now, folks, I am looking at the Billboard year-end top singles for 1956, and there is no doubt that Elvis Presley, who originally was a truck driver and along with Sam Phillips combined the country hillbilly sound with what was known as race records or blues and country blues, Elvis fused those together and he was an attractive white personality that people thought could cross these divisions. And in the top 50, I see one, two, three, four, uh, four hits by Elvis, Carl Perkins, uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford. In these days, country and, uh, and, and, and rhythm and blues were fusing to become a new music. And re let's not forget, folks, that what we call rhythm and blues records today were really considered race records, uh, records that were created with uh, black people in mind and black sensibilities in mind. And with that, perhaps a looser uh, transgression of the English language, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is leading us to today's featured program, which is Cruise in the 50s and 60s, 1956 edition. Now, as you know, uh, the word cruising doesn't appear in the dictionary, but it's a fam familiar word to millions of people who did it. it cruise in the 50s and 60s is a year-by-year -year recreation of pop music radio during the years 1955 through 1970. Each release was not just a collection of the top pop music of that particular year, but a total recreation by a top disc jockey of that year doing his original program over a major market pop music station. And today's featured DJ is from Detroit, Mr. Robin Seymour. And Robin Seymour was a very interesting per personality in 1956. Uh, he was uh, born in Detroit, Michigan, and the station we're uh, featuring, CKLW, was a Detroit station. He was a radio personality and a television music show, 
host of Teen Town, the TV music series, and Swingin' Time in Detroit. He started his career in radio as a child actor on The Lone Ranger Show, and later became one of the country's top ten disc jockeys for a number of years. Let's remember, folks, that in those first years, every major city had a teen afternoon uh, American bandstand type of show. And Robin Seymour was that personality for Detroit, and he was also at ground zero for the creation and the beginning of the Motown radio, the Motown sound. And Robin Seymour really was an architect as a, a live music promoter, uh, playing the music on the radio, and exposing that same important music to the teenagers who were now becoming consumers. They had jobs as babysitters, lawnmowers, uh, chores around the house. Almost every teenager had an allowance, which allowed them to go down to the local record store and buy a record, a single, for as little as 25 or 50 cents. So if you made $5 a week, you could buy some sugar babies, some Humpty Dumpty barbecue chips in America, the best barbecue chips ever in America, Humpty Dumpty barbecue available at your local drive-in. And you could also buy a couple of singles and a couple of comic books. As a teenager, your life was complete. So now we are proud to present exclusively on RadioWebFray.com, Cruisin featuring DJ Robin Seymour. Enjoy. Enjoy. 